This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at a modeling technique known as extrude. Extrusions are done by simply taking a flat, two-dimensional shape and pushing or pulling it in a single direction. The technique can be used to create a wide variety of things. Anything from a floor to a wall to maybe something like a top to a desk or the front to a kitchen cabinet. Anything flat is the job for the extrude. Here's how it works. The process starts by first creating a flat two-dimensional shape. Let's make things in the front view so our resulting object will stand up on edge. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. Now over in the Modify column, if there's any changes I want to make to the rectangle shape, I can easily do so. We've got the length, the width, and the corner radius. Let's now go in the Modify column, finding the Extrude modifier. Click on the name Extrude. With the modifier now applied, over on the right I can adjust the amount. You'll most easily see the thickness as it's building up in either the shaded view or the top or left viewports. Using a positive amount value will push the shape forward, while using a negative value will pull the shape back. That's pretty much all there is to it. It doesn't matter what shape you begin with, as long as it's flat, it can be extruded. Let's go ahead and delete that, this time drawing a star in our front view. And like we did on the rectangle, if there's any initial changes we want to make to our star, we can do that in the Modify column. For this one, let's add a little distortion. We'll then also change the Fillet Radius 1 and the Radius 1 values. OK, once we've done that, let's get back in the modifier list, again adding the extrude. This time, to quickly jump down to the E's, I'll simply type the E letter on my keyboard. Then, a few modifiers further down, I'll click on Extrude. Because we're working in the same file, Max remembers the last time that we adjusted the height on our extrude, and initially applies that same value, in other words, that same height, to our new extrude. Now, that's something to keep in mind as long as you're working in the same file. By same, I mean that we've yet to reset the system, creating a new scene. And because of that, Max will remember and carry over the values from one use of a command to another. Now there's something interesting that happens if you extrude a shape that consists of two shapes, basically having a second shape, or more appropriately put, a second spline inside the first. An example of something like that would be the egg shape, which is new to version 2013. Let's see how that looks real quick. Let's go ahead and delete our star. Back in Create Shapes, we'll click on the Egg command. This time, because the viewport you make things in does make a difference, we'll make our egg shape in our top view. We'll activate that, then begin drawing. OK, once that's in place, let's go back and add the Extrude modifier. Again, we see the exact same Extrude thickness applied, being that we continue to be working in the same file. Let's take our Perspective View full screen and orbit around. We'll activate the view, then tap Alt-W, taking it full screen. We can then orbit around using the Alt Middle Mouse Whale shortcut. Working a little further down in the stack, let's click on the name Egg. We can now, using the parameters below, change the shape of the original egg shape. Let's try adjusting the thickness. Thinner, we've got something that maybe looks like a fan belt. Thickening that up, we've got something that maybe is a little bit closer to a dog bone. OK, let's see if we can't use what we've learned to make, let's say, a logo design. This is a file named Extrude. You can find it in your Working Files folder. Let's start by taking our Perspective View full screen and then selecting the light blue rectangle at the bottom of the view. We can now go ahead into the Modifier list, adding the Extrude modifier. The rectangle, having originally been made in the top view, determines the orientation of the object in our scene. You can see how it's lying flat in relation to all the other shapes in the scene. Let's take the Extrude amount up to 30. We'll simply type that in, then press Enter. Let's now select the yellow shape, which consists of several nested splines. Now with this nesting configuration, I'm kind of curious on what this thing's going to end up looking like once the Extrude's applied. Let's go ahead and do that. Having previously adjusted the Extrude amount on our blue rectangle, you can see that that same amount has matched up on our yellow surface. Take a look at what those inside nested splines have done while parts of the geometry appear to be solid, while other areas appear to be dug out. Let's now go in for the red text. 
We'll select that in the view, then apply the extrude modifier. For the wording, let's make that a little bit thicker. We'll take the extrude amount up from 30 to 40. Remember to tap the Enter key when you're done to lock that in. I'm going to go ahead and save this out as extruded completed if you'd like to take a look. Now, when working with extrusions, there are a couple rules that you need to conform to if you want things to turn out right. First, in almost every situation, the liner shape that you're going to extrude should be closed. In other words, no open ends. It doesn't matter what the shape is or how it looks, those ends need to be tied together. That's important. Secondly, you never want any of the lines in your shape to intersect or overlap in any way. You let either of those things happen, open ends or overlapping lines, and trust me, you're going to have problems. Let me show you a quick example that will drive those two important points home. I'm going to take my front view full screen to draw my shapes. You can make that to one viewport conversion by simply typing Alt-W. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw three circular shapes. One being drawn correctly with no overlap and closed ends, the other two being drawn wrong. Let's go ahead and activate our line command and begin. I'll start with a closed in non-overlapping line in the middle. I'll draw it kind of like the shape of an apple. Now it doesn't need to be perfect, just don't have any of the line overlap and make sure to close the ends together. Over on the left hand side, for my second line, I'll draw it pretty much the same shape but we'll leave the ends open. And over on the right hand side, shape number three, that'll be closed but it will have an overlap in the line. Now if the two rules of thumb that I just gave you are right, the only one when extruded that'll look correct when done will be the one in the middle. Let's see if that's the case. We'll deselect the lines, going back to four screens. We'll then activate our perspective view, taking it full screen. Once we've done that, we'll hit Z to center, then reselect the middle circle. Okay, here we go. We'll get in the modify column, going down to the extrude modifier. Applying the extrude, it looks like things have turned out as a solid surface. Let's go ahead and take that amount up to maybe 15. Let's now work on the line on the left. We'll go back in the stack and apply an extrude modifier to this one also. Now take a look at that. Not closing up the lines has formed a hollow inside. Not exactly what I was looking for. For the shape on the right, we'll again apply the extrude modifier, but this time we'll do it a little bit differently. Go back and select the extruded circle in the middle. Heading back to the right hand side, put your mouse on the name extrude. Hold that down and then drag that directly onto that right hand side line. Now you're not going to want to let go until you see the no sign disappear. When it does, release your mouse. Again, we see what not conforming to the general rules of extruding is done. That little loop that we put in the bottom again has caused negative space on the inside of our surface. So that'll get you going using the extrude. Use it on any closed, non-overlapping shape to create whatever a scene might need as far as a flat object. I'll go ahead and save this file out as three extrusions completed if you'd like to look it over.